Alright, BBay40 back with another Zombies Recall video. And this is what I'm doing to uh, help everybody with surviving in the game. Especially if you're a new player. I highly recommend you watch this video through. So, I'm starting off with the I-37 shotgun. A very, very weak shotgun. And I deliberately pick a bunch of weaker weapons in this particular video to sh demonstrate uh, techniques, uh, survival techniques in the game. And what I'm going to talk about mainly, uh, the main way to survive in this game, and the number one way that I found to survive in this game, is you got to keep moving. you got to keep running. You can't sit still in this game or the zombies will be right on you in a matter of fractions of a second, and you'll be dead. So, run. you got to learn how to run. Now, the way you run is by hitting the shift key. Now, I use... And I recommend this if you're not used to using the ASWD keys. If you're still using arrow keys, you got to break yourself of that habit. You can't you can't use the arrow keys in this game. You won't live. You got to learn how to use the ASWD. The A is moving left, D is moving right, W is moving forward, S is moving backwards. And you do that with your left hand. Just use your first three fingers to control those keys. You use your pinky on the shift key and your thumb on the spacebar. Now if you notice what I'm doing, or trying to do here, I'm getting off to a bad start, <laughs> is you got to run. You constantly have to be moving. You constantly have to be running. So what you do is you run away from the zombies, turn, shoot. You run, turn, shoot. Run, turn, shoot. Run, turn, shoot. Just keep moving. You can't stand still for more than a second. You really can't. Because the game always knows where you are. And it will always spawn zombies behind you. They'll always be coming up behind you and hitting you on your back. So the only way to prevent that is to keep moving. Now even, uh, you know, I can't demonstrate it very well here because this is, this is like a single shot shotgun that I'm playing with here, the I-37, with very limited ammo. You see how long it takes just to reload it. It has to, like, feed the shells in from the bottom side into the chamber. So it's, it's a pathetic gun. <laughs> it's only like a starter gun, something you can use at the very beginning of the game. And it is actually hanging on a wall. It's upstairs. Um, I call it the plantation room because it has those big arching plantation stairwells on the sides. But it's up on the upper platform on the wall there, just as I-37. And they, they're asking a ridiculous amount of money for it too. It's like 1,500, 2,000 points to buy it. And it's a useless gun. It really is useless. It's only good for maybe the first one, two, maybe three rounds of the game. That's it. If you hold it longer than that, you're not going to live very long. Because if you saw when I got it triple papped, it only has 40 rounds in reserve with 5 rounds in the chamber. It's a total 45 bullets. That's it. That's not enough to live on in high waves. And you'll see I'm just about to run out of ammo. I'm going to have to switch to my machine gun. But this is the strategy. You've got to learn to do this if you want to live in this game. You've got to learn to move. You've got to learn to run, turn, shoot, run, turn, shoot. And running, you just start with hitting a W key, and then you put your pinky right on the shift key, and you start running. And once you start running, you can take your pinky off the shift key, and you'll still be running. It won't stop running. And then you can hit the shift key again for a, what, for a, like a double run, like a sprint. You run even faster, twice as fast, if you double shift. So I'm going to keep grabbing different guns to demonstrate this technique of running and shooting. And uh, I'm going to try to pick the weaker guns to show that even if you have a weak gun and not, you don't have a really great gun, you can still live. You can still survive. And here I'm going to grab this, uh, I'm not going to go with this ballista. I'm going to pick out, the next one's going to be an SB-50A, another, another rifle. So I ran it already with a, uh, a shotgun, a small shotgun, and I'm going to try a rifle. And this is a, a fairly decent rifle. Among all the rifles, this is one of the better ones. Because it's semi-automatic, it automatically reloads for you pretty quick. You can fire off rounds rather rapidly. A disadvantage, it has a lot of kick. So the, the front, you see the front end bounces up pretty fast. So you can't really shoot too fast because you won't be able to aim the second shot. You'll be shooting way up in the air from the kick. <laughs> so, yeah, in this game, um, what I found, shotguns and rifles are useless. They really are very difficult to operate. They have very limited ammo. They're very slow because they take 
time between rounds. You have to reload each round, most of them. They're not semi-automatic like this one. And they all have a lot of kick. That front end of the gun just bounces right up. And you can't aim until it settles back down. You can't shoot and aim again until it settles down. So they're, they're difficult to survive with. They have limited ammo. And some of them, like the shotguns, are not even all that strong. Most of the rifles are fairly strong, but the shotguns are not. And uh, you see this rifle here, I, I don't fire rapidly because of the kick. But I try to line up the zombies and take two or three out in one shot. It is powerful. Very strong gun. But again, it's difficult to aim and, uh, you know, rapidly. And it's heavy. So you can't really run as fast either. Most of the rifles uh, uh, weigh you down and, and slow you down. You can't run as fast, but you can still run. As you see, I'm still kind of staying ahead of the zombies and running away from them and able to keep my distance. And you notice as I'm backing up shooting, I'm moving. Even while I'm turned and shooting, I'm still moving. I'm moving backwards away from the zombies. And I'm moving side to side in case the zombie comes up behind me. I'll end up going around him. And I'll only take maybe one hit from a zombie that comes up behind me. So you just got to keep moving always. Even when you're shooting, move backwards. Always be moving. And this is this really the only way you're going to survive in this game. There's no place to camp in this game. You can't camp somewhere like you can in other zombie games like Zombie Rush. You just can't camp in this game. You've got to keep moving. The zombies will find you. <laughs> and they'll be on you in an instant. So let's see if I grab This is the P90. Now the advantage of the P90 is it is a machine gun and has a lot of rounds. Altogether, you'll see when I get a triple papped, it holds 1,100 rounds total. Actually, 1,101. <laughs> but the other problem with this guy, though, the downside of this, even though it has a lot of rounds, the rounds are very, very weak. It's like you're shooting pellets at the zombies. They do very little damage. It takes several shovels. Gosh, I mean, sometimes maybe it's 10 shots. Somewhere between 6 and 10. I can't really count because it shoots so fast. But you definitely cannot take a zombie down with one shot unless you have insta-kill. So it has a lot of ammo. 100 rounds in the chamber. 1,000 in reserve. But it's weak. Very weak machine gun. And you see that as I'm running around shooting. How I unload a whole clip into a whole group of zombies and it doesn't take them all down. Unlike my M16 which I really like. Now the M16, I talk about a lot in a lot of these uh, videos that I do. And the reason I like it so much is because it's right behind the teleporter, hanging on the wall there. It is fairly strong and it has a good amount of ammo. It has 660 rounds total. And it's right there. So even if I'm shooting it all the time and I run out of ammo, and I've done this many times, I just run back behind the teleporter and I reload it. I buy more ammo. That's what's really great about the M16. Now that time I almost got myself stuck. I waited too long to move. And that's because I was wanting to unload the whole clip into the zombies. And you can't be tempted to just keep shooting and shooting. When those zombies start getting close, you got to start running. <clears throat> you got to get away from them. Or well, they couldn't end up trapping you and pinning you into a corner or into a wall. <clears throat> if you do get stuck, if the zombies do pin you somewhere, hit that space bar and jump. Jump up over them, jump on them, and move forward. Just try to move away from them. Just try to get out of that corner. If they trap you, just jump. Jumping helps a lot. And again, I just gotta keep repeating this because you gotta, you gotta. What I recommend too is just uh, go in the game. Don't even try to shoot a zombie. Just try to run around them. Just practice running. You know, start off the game, practice running. You gotta learn how to run in this game. You gotta learn how to run around the zombies. You can learn how to dodge around them, cut between them, run away from them, run around them. You gotta practice running in this game. It's the key to surviving in this game. Because I was, you know, when I first started this game, I was like everybody else. I, I had a hard time getting past round five. Because the zombies were coming fast and I didn't know how to run. <laughs> I had to learn how to run. So here come the Chernobyls. Uh, these guys come out about roughly around every five rounds. You might see these guys come out. And they're a different kind of zombie. We call them Chernobyls. Uh, a friend of mine named them that because they uh, 
they almost look like they're radioactive. I mean, even the atmosphere gets radioactive. It changes. They have these hazmat suits on, make these clicky sounds. And when they get close to you, um, they don't even have to hit you. They start to drain your health just from being near you. And you notice that colors start to change. Everything starts to turn gray when they get closer and closer to you. So they actually take damage just from being near these guys, like they're radioactive. That's why I call them the Chernobyl zombies. And always reload your chamber before you pick up an ammo box in order to maximize your ammo. Because the ammo box only replenishes what you have in reserve. It doesn't replenish your magazine or your clip or your, your chamber. So I always reload my magazine to the max before I pick up an ammo box. So I get the maximum amount of ammo out of the box. And now I picked up, this is a, the MG42 I believe. It's a big, big heavy gun with a lot of kick. And it's, it's another slow runner. You can't run very fast with it. I kind of call it my alligator because it looks like you're holding an alligator in your hand. <laughs> and, uh, but the rounds again, it's like the, uh, they're a little bit stronger than the P90, but not much. They're also very weak. Again, it's like shooting pellets at the zombies. It takes a lot of rounds to take down the zombies from these guns. Which I don't understand. I mean, if you watch my uh, video on the guns of Verrucht, this gun is one of the guns you can get off the wall in Verrucht. And I, I really, I mean, it, it really sucked in Verrucked. <laughs> I was very disappointed. It's such a big, mean-looking gun, you'd expect a lot more out of it. Yeah, but uh, you see it takes several rounds to take down a zombie. It is taking him down, but insta-kill, you know, I just picked up an insta-kill event, so it took him down very quickly. But without insta-kill, you could hot unload basically a whole clip to take down a group of zombies. But this bad boy does have a lot of ammo, but this is one of those guns, if you noticed, um, after, right after I got a triple pap, they said I had a thousand rounds in reserve. But they all, as soon as I shot the gun, the reserve got cut in half down to 500. And I don't know why it does that with some of these big guns, and it does it with the, uh, the ray gun and the thunder gun. Same thing. You lose half of your reserve ammo when you fire it. It's kind of an impressive looking gun, sounding gun, but like I say, it's, it's slow. You can't run very fast with it. It takes time to reload it, as you just saw. And the ammo is weak. The, the rounds are weak. It takes a lot of them to take down the zombies. So anyway, I'm going back to the box again. I'm going to pick out another gun. And this time I'm getting a little MP30. It's like the little brother of the MP40. But it's actually, it's even stronger than that MG42. The rounds are stronger. And you see that when we get it all triple papped, I run I run around with this gun. I go through a whole round with it. But it's a short round, and that's weird. Sometimes in Kino I've had this happen before. You occasionally get a really short round. Like this next round is only gonna take like about I don't know, thirty seconds and it's done. <laughs> Now what I do here, since I'm the pyro, is I throw my uh, molotovs down there on the, on the zombies that are gathering below. And you see how many points I get with the molotovs. You see all the 900s flashing up there. The molotovs give a, a lot of points, which come in very, very handy for papping your guns and, and going through the mystery box and opening doors, have all those extra points. And I did a whole video on the pyro, if you want to check that out. I might talk about the uh, how, to, how to get the to get the most out of the uh, pyro molotov cocktails so you can see this gun it's you know not the strongest it's not as strong as my m16 but it is taking zombies down you can see it does kill them you know keeping them pretty much under control but that was the last one it was a very very short round so i'm going back to the mystery box again see what i can pick out this time and I end up getting this little pistol it's called the zal Z-O-L-L. -L. And it turned out to be a surprisingly good little pistol. And what's really surprising about it is it's just like the starter pistol that you start the game off with, the M1911. It has explosive rounds when you get it triple-papped. 
And you see that if I get triple papped and I end up uh, firing it into some zombies. And the thing with, ex with guns that have explosive rounds, they don't explode unless you hit a zombie. You know, like I can shoot the walls, I can shoot other players, or shoot anything. And you won't get an explosion. It's only when you hit the zombies that you get an explosion. I think some other guns, the, the Car 98 is another one that has explosive rounds, but it's a bolt action gun, so the explosive rounds don't do you any good. The M16, I'm sorry, the M14. It's one of the starter rifles you can get off the wall, the M14 Garard. It also has explosive rounds. And that's a fun one to play with, with the explosive rounds, because you can rapid fire it. And that's what you got to do. I'm going to show you here. If you have a gun with explosive rounds, with a pistol or rifle, you got to bunch the zombies up. You got to gather them up into a group. Get them all bunched together in a group, and you can take them all out in a single burst. And it has to be a burst. You can't just fire a single shot. It'll just kind of like bounce off them. It won't hurt a zombie. And it takes like three... If you fire, fire slowly, it'll take three shots to take a zombie down. Two or three shots to kill a zombie with explosive rounds. But the key, what I just did there, if you saw, is you have to fire a rapid burst. I usually fire around four rounds, give or take, rapidly into the group of zombies as a just a fast burst of, of shots. And they combine together to create a, a really large explosion and kill all the zombies in a bunch. You see I did it there again. That's what you got to do with these, these ex, uh, guns with exploding rounds. You have to fire a burst into a group of zombies. But they are fun. Fun to play with. But you also got to be careful with them too, because if you fire them too close, if you shoot some zombies that are really close to you, you can end up killing yourself. So be careful of that. Now this little spot here in front of the stage, this black area in front of the stage, it's an AFK spot. You, if you lay down here, the zombies can't find you. So you can go AFK here for a little while if you have to go get a drink, go use the bathroom, or you want to get a bite to eat. <clears throat> just hit the letter C and hold it till you drop down. And you see I'm firing three shots it takes to kill these these zombies here. One, two, three. So that's why I say it's best to try to gather them up into a bunch. One, two, three. Three shots. Explosive rounds. It's ridiculous. They should be blowing up these zombies in the one shot, but that's just the way they made the game. So again, Chernobyl zombies back yourself into a corner, and they just spawn right in front of you. You just sit there and take them out. Very easy to kill these guys. Just find yourself a corner and you can back into that they don't spawn very close to you. In case you have to reload, you have enough time to reload your gun before they get you. So I'm going to do a little bit more with the uh, explosive pistol. Or uh, I think, yeah. Well, we'll see. I can figure out if I can, yeah, I think the uh, Zal is the last gun that I get in the game. That pistol, the exploding pistol. So I just reloaded my uh, M16, in case I need it again. I'm going to do one more uh, kill with the Zal, with the explosive rounds, and then I'm going to be set, and that'll be the end of the game. <clears throat> so to recap, learn how to run. And I recommend if you're new at this game, go in the game and don't even bother trying to kill the zombies. Just practice running until you get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of running and staying away from the zombies and keeping the zombies away from you, then you'll be ready to, to, you know, to play this game and survive for quite a few rounds. So I just let the zombies kill me because I wanted to reset. That's all I wanted to do you know, for this particular video. <clears throat> and I recommend you do this at the end of the game. You let the zombies kill you or reset. You hit escape and reset. And go through these credits at the end because you end up earning skill points. You get credit for all the work that you did in the game. And they go towards skill points. And those skill points you get put toward your favorite soldier. And you can beef up the characteristics of that soldier. Like the tank, you can give him more health. With the uh, pyro, I can increase the strength of my Molotovs, so the bonus points from the Molotovs. Um, with the marksman, you can increase the amount of ammo that you carry. You do all that with these skill points. You see, I've got 218 skill points now, and I can't use them 
because all my soldiers are beefed up to the max. I can't beef them up anymore. <laughs> I even bought the pyro and beefed that one up all the way. So you can see the points that you get. Uh, you get 100 points for every round you survive. Zombies is like one for one. They always round it up to the nearest 100. Players revive. There were some players at the beginning of the game that I revived. You get 500 points for every player that you revive, which is great. You get 200 points for every door you open. You get 400 points for every weapon you upgrade. I think you get 300 if you melee zombies. But I didn't melee any, so you don't see that there. And all that's up across this bar. You need 10,000 points per skill point. So all those points added up, it gave me two or three skill points in this game. But anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you do, give a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Share it. Subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. And catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.